Hi, welcome to the Age Changer Show brought to you by Summit Life Ministries. My name is Carmen Furrow. This is the founder of Summit Life Ministries and my husband, Lynn Furrow. Um, at Summit Life Ministries, our mission is to elevate, equip, and empower. I bet you can say this with me about by this time. Elevate the church's vision to see our identity through God's eternal purpose. Equip believers to live with an eternal perspective and empower believers to live supernatural lifestyles in faith-filled obedience. That's what we're doing. That's what our life is about, following the Lord that way. We had an exciting week last week in Indiana. You're at New Covenant Worship Center, and we had some really neat discussion and really just enlightening and transparency of leadership lessons learned. Um, do you want to say anything about last week? It was just great to be with uh, friends and spiritual family. Mm -hmm. And as I had said in last week's episodes uh, when we recorded with their uh, pastoral team. It had been three years since we had ministered at New Covenant because of responsibilities and, and just a lack of uh, extra local ministry uh, of tra or travel ministry. Uh, but it was just great to be with family and friends. Uh, I consider it a real privilege when I'm there. Uh, New Covenant is a very unique work uh, and uh, they are a church that passionately pursues the Lord. Yes, they, do. they passionately pursue spiritual health, maturity, and well-being. And they're a house of, of worshipers. They have some very talented musicians and singers. And so it's just it's good to see how God creates each church unique, mm -hmm. but it has his fingerprints upon it. And like you said, it's like family because we're all, it's one body. So we yeah. go there and we have these relationships. Absolutely. The body of Christ. And even though I, we were gone for a number of years, not ministering there uh, on a regular basis, you know, when you have friends and when you have uh, relationships, it's as if you pick up right where you left off. And, and so it was just a, a good time. I really enjoyed how thoughtful the leaders were mm -hmm. in being able to be vulnerable and transparent, but also answering uh, the questions that we ask about 2020 and what were life lessons, leadership lessons, and what they sensed the Lord was doing. So it was just, uh, I, I believe, some great shows last week. Uh, and we will continue to do that as we travel and as we minister. Uh, we will introduce you to different leaders and I'm excited to be able to do that and to have them participate in the Age Changer Show. So what do we have for the Age Changer Show today? Well, for those that are rejoining us, uh, we're, we're recentering upon uh, our inaugural series. And I know we've been at this for about three months, mm -hmm. but uh, we have been on a series which is the basis of a book that I'm in the process of writing. And I wanted to uh, introduce the content of the book in hopes of maybe stirring up a spiritual appetite for some of the themes that we've been teaching on and uh, produce an interest if people want to know more about it. Just to let you know, uh, we are hopefully going to be finishing the writing part of the book by the end of the year or first part of January. We've had a lot of uh, <laughs> life things happening that have interrupted us, and we're in the process of selling our home and and uh, in a transition, and and so I just haven't been able to right. focus as much as I've wanted to but, on that project. But, but we're better gonna to, better to have a goal and shift the timing a little bit than to not have the goal. Yeah, better. To I, <laughs> I think one leader said, uh, "If you aim at nothing, you hit it every time." But if you have a goal, and even though you may uh, miss the bullseye, at least you're still on the target or you're close <laughs> to the target. So um, I really look forward to seeing that project completed, and it, it'll be our first book that, that we have uh, written. And there's another one on worship in my heart that I think as soon as Age Changers, the book Age Changers is finished, we're going to roll that one out after that. So I'm going to plow into writing that. But this uh, Age Changer show, the name of it is based upon this inaugural series. But there have been numbers 
uh, or numerous segments that we've done within this series title. We just finished a large two-week segment called Hell's Best Kept Secret. It was how the enemy had conspired to interface and intertwine his destiny with the destiny of man and how Jesus used weakness and what was the appearance of foolishness. The weakness of the cross and the foolishness of God walking in human flesh. But it was the devil's undoing when Satan targeted him for death because it, in no matter what court, it is illegal and unlawful uh, to kill and keep uh, in the power of death someone dead who has never sinned. Because a person that has never sinned, they don't stay dead. <laughs> they rise <laughs> right. from the dead. And, and when one man got out of the grave, we've said that. It was a harbinger. It was a gateway moment that brought hope for all humanity that had been enslaved through death. So where I want to go in this session, and obviously this is Monday and we're rolling out where we're going to go this week. We want to focus on the exaltation of Christ. Okay. I said at the last uh, show when we were talking about hell's best kept secret, mm -hmm. I said that there are three events that are like spiritual pillars, touchstones yes. for a believer and, you know, emblematic in every church, uh, there are crosses mm -hmm. everywhere. And sometimes they're in the auditorium lobby, they're on printed documents, okay. but, but by and large, if you walked into a Christian church, you would see, uh, the emblem of the cross that also reflects what happened after Christ's death, his burial. Um, the, the cross, his death and burial is like this spiritual pillar uh, that we need to interact with, mm -hmm. contemplate. Jesus said, when you take communion, do this in remembrance, allow the Holy Spirit to re reconstruct this moment and allow our hearts to interact with Jesus in the fellowship of his suffering. Then comes the resurrection. After the death, the burial, then we have the resurrection. And I've said for a long time that even though we have the cross as the symbol primarily of all Christianity, of equal importance and of equal note to the Christian faith should also be an open sepulcher, a, a, a empty grave, mm -hmm. because you do not have a resurrection without the gateway experience of the cross, mm -hmm. you have to have a death for the revelation of resurrection. But we also know this, Paul said clearly, if Christ did not rise from the dead, our faith is entirely in vain. Because yeah. it means that sure. even though Jesus's death uh, was sentimental, a good man doing something in which he was saying, I'm going to identify with the suffering of humanity and their condition. You, you've seen individuals do that where they feel sympathetic to a certain cause and they're willing to lay down their life to try to make a statement, right. but it would not have changed anything. Right. But when Jesus raised from the dead, it was the day death was abolished. It was the day death died. Yeah. And it was the day that the stronghold and the gates of death were shaken, shaken to their core. You know, the, the hinges that held that, that, that prison of death in place. Uh, those gates were broken from their bars mm -hmm. and unhinged and death no longer could keep us enslaved. But there is a third, and this is where I want us to focus on today, because when we talk about the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus, in most of our professions, in most of our confessions, we talk about death, burial, and resurrection. And it's kind of like that little turn of phrase mm -hmm. that we use. 
but truly we're not finished with the revelation of these three pillar experiences mm -hmm. of the Christian faith unless we talk about his ascension and exaltation. And just as the cross and the burial are connected together, really, I think that when we say he, he was raised the third day uh, and he ascended up, uh, it is important. I know the connectivity between them, but I want to this week really talk about the importance of his ascension and his, his exaltation. And we've been, we had been talking because we've been listening to some music that kind of head that way. But so, but it's this, what happened? I think sometimes people don't think about it as much because it's the, what happened when you couldn't see him anymore. It, you know, it happened this, in an unseen realm yeah. to us. And so it is as if when Jesus disappeared out of their sight, he disappeared out of their thinking, mm -hmm. but that's not true. Right. You read the New Testament and there is this story of what happened beyond the veil of that which was seen, mm -hmm. which is so important for every believer to understand. So we use the phrase out of sight, out of mind. Well, the Holy Spirit does not want the exaltation of Christ mm -hmm. to be out of our thinking, right. out of our of the, the forefront of our understanding of the totality of the work that Jesus accomplished mm -hmm. for us. Jesus died for us and as us. He was buried to demonstrate that that former mm -hmm. life that we lived in, uh, that story, that history of a, of a fallen man, a fallen world, a broken, cursed uh, world that had the absence of God's blessing and a multiplying curse upon it, that becomes buried. Old things pass away. And now everything has the ability to become brand new. As we've said before, when we were teaching on this, he is the second Adam. He was the last Adam, but the second man. Mm -hmm. But that man is a heavenly man. Yes. And it says that he is a life-giving, breath-breathing spirit. But what he breathes out is life. It's not natural respiration. It is a spiritual, creative respiration to the planet. Behold, he said, I will make everything new. So much so that the former things no longer will even come to mind. When he's finished with his creation, we're no longer going to recall the fall. That's I want amazing. you to hear that. We'll no longer recall the fall because everything will be made new, including me and you. <laughs> we're somewhere right now <laughs> in the future and we look a whole lot better, as Kim Clement used to say, than we do right now. And, and, and what, a, what a powerful moment when we realize that his life that has worked within us, even though the outward man has been perishing, he has been at work inwardly in hiddenness to begin to renew us day by day, day, by day. glory to glory, strength to strength, unto one level of grace to another, from one level of faith to another, mm -hmm. and, and our faith is able to receive more grace, which brings us into more glory. Mm -hmm. And so we will see when he reveals himself, we will see that we are like him. Some people have interpreted that, that finally when, when I see him, then I will have him do what he needs to do with me. No, you will see that he's been at work all along. Mm, there's a hidden thing happening. But all of a sudden, the, the robe of this flesh mm. will be peeled back and that the new will be exposed. It will be, be realized and be mm -hmm. seen. And we'll see that, that he that had begun a good work has yeah. perfected it and performed it according to the word that he gave birth to us by spiritually. This is the hope we have, and this is where our faith is, that yeah. he started it and he'll complete it. So the exaltation, yeah. 
Why don't we just get into it and how it is so important for us to, again, have the Holy Spirit allow us to interact with it. Mm -hmm. So I have entreated people, allow the Holy Spirit to transport you back as it were in time and to fellowship with Jesus and his sufferings. Behold the Lamb of God Mm -hmm. that takes away the sins of the world. But we also want to behold the risen King. But then we want the Holy Spirit to take us on a journey of when Jesus disappeared out of their natural sight. Mm -hmm. Where did he go? What happened to him in his life journey? As a man. And this is the the truth that we have to really wrap our heart and mind around. Jesus did not divest himself of his human nature. He is both human and divine. And many people thought that when he entered into time and space, he shared uh, shared with us in our humanity. But then when he would no longer need his flesh, He would go back to his original state, that he would be totally deity, totally divine. And he is total divinity, total Mm -hmm. divine, but with the absence of any uh, of his human nature. So they thought earth suit, put on your earth suit, take Take your your earth earth suit (laughs) off. I'm back to realms of glory that I used to dwell in. That is not the case. Our savior, our redeemer, our Lord and our King has chosen to forever live in the frame of a human body and have a human nature. And we'll see the importance and the significance of that as we walk through some of the passages of Scripture. So this was a, when he ascended out of their sight, when he was raised but now ascending This was a continuation of his life journey, his human life experience. It was now a part of his human experience, but Carmen, this was a human experience that no other human had ever had. So he is the first human being, the first man, who is ever experiencing what we call exaltation. Mm -hmm. He's the first man that's ever going through this promotion process where God says, because of your obedience, because of your faithfulness, because you were willing to obey my will in complete obedience, now I'm going to highly exalt you And I'm going to give to you a name that is above everything that's ever been created and been named. And I'm going to give you a position and a place that no one has ever been given. (laughs) So it is essential for if we want to dive deep into the phrase, who am I in God? Christ. Mm-hmm. And, and there have been series uh, about this and mm-hmm. other, other truths that, you know, wing out from that truth statement, who mm-hmm. I am in Jesus, like the authority of the believer mm-hmm. or, or Christ in me, the hope of glory, who, I, who Jesus is in me. Mm-hmm. It's imperative that you know what happened to Jesus in his ascension and exaltation to know who you are in Christ. Because just as he is the resurrection and the life, he is also the ascension and the resurrection. Mm -hmm. His ascension, or excuse me, exaltation. Mm -hmm. His ascension and exaltation is my ascension Mm -hmm. and my exaltation. The shared experience that you've It is the shared experience. Just as he is my resurrection, but also 
He is my death. He is my crucifixion. I am co-crucified with Christ. We must marry Jesus. And I'm going to use that term uh, in in a way just for emphasis. I must embrace. I must marry. I must uh, so, you know, embrace and engage myself in each one of these experiences mm-hmm. to know the fullness of Christ, mm-hmm. not just in his death, not just in his resurrection, but also in his ascension and exaltation. So t- Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we're going to dive deep in some passages of scripture. Many of you watch this uh, as a video experience through uh, the YouTube channel or on Facebook. I encourage you when we study this to have your scriptures open and a notebook because it's important for you not to just hear it once, yeah. but have the ability to go back and restudy this and to rehearse it over in your heart, meditate on mm-hmm. it so that his ascension and exaltation becomes an experience, experiential reality, an interactive mm-hmm. experience for you. Because Paul said this, and this is one of the first scriptures we're going to go uh, to uh, tomorrow, is he said, you have been seated together with him in heavenly places with Christ. So it's important that we study this. If you're listening it, uh, to this as a podcast, I encourage you to go back and re-listen to it several times if you're not driving and, 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 and things like that and take notes by re-listening to it. I thank everybody for joining us as we launch into the exaltation of Jesus Christ so we discover more of who we are in him. Mm-hmm. It really has helped me. I've noticed in in interacting with the word to take notes, but also... Our expectation is that as you share the word, that the Holy Spirit is working on the hearing of the word because the word is anointed so that you should be hearing things from the Holy Spirit of him speaking to you. So as you're speaking, I was just thinking thinking more thoughts on that and had to even had written down some questions. So, so faith, I'm excited about you know, digging into this. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Mm-hmm. Faith is something that allows us to see the unseen. And so, you know, it's, it's as if we have insight. Mm-hmm. We start seeing inside of us what God has given to us in Christ. That's good. Well, thank you for joining us at Summit Life Ministries for the Age Changer Show. If you'd like to know more about Summit Life Ministries, you can look at summitlifeministries.com. Also, we are present on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, those kinds of things. You can follow us, subscribe to us on those. And we appreciate your support and your prayers and encouraging us. And we want to encourage you to keep following after the Lord with all your heart. God bless you.